Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The U-2 Dragon Lady is one of the most important spy planes ever commissioned by the U.S. Air Force. Despite making its debut all the way back in 1955, this Cold War reconnaissance jet remains integral to the United States' information gathering efforts. Due to the nature of its mission, there are a lot of features built into the U-2 which make it exceedingly unique. The Dragon Lady is specifically designed to reach altitudes of up to 80,000 feet in just a few minutes and stay aloft for up to 14 hours. This forced engineers to design an incredibly light body capable of standing up to the rigors of high altitude flying. Because of these weight-cutting measures, the U-2 has earned a reputation for being extremely difficult to fly. This is not helped by the fact that the plane only has a semi-pressurized cabin, which forces all pilots to wear a pressure suit during operation. Witnessing the U-2 maintenance process makes it abundantly clear just how unique the design of this aircraft really is. The long cylindrical fuselage can be separated just behind the wings, giving maintenance personnel easy access to both the engine and the engine compartment. Take the insulation off, make it like you about to expect the clamp. Just take the insulation off. There you go. Yeah. That dude, we cut it, Cody. I'm not going to lie, this thing is pretty clean. Seriously? Again, everything about the U-2's construction is focused on allowing it to fly as high and as long as possible, or keeping the plane extremely light in weight. For this reason, many electrical and other system components are straightforward to access. The engine consists of a single turbojet, typically a General Electric F-118-101 which can put out around 17,000 pounds of thrust. Though this contributes to the plane's high rate of climb, the U-2 has never been about speed. In fact, its top speed is just 470 miles per hour, which is low for a military jet. Any aircraft that has been in operation for 70 years is going to require a significant amount of maintenance. Yeah. 
However, because the U-2 is specifically designed to fly at such high altitudes, its components are subject to icing and other forms of damage not necessarily seen on planes with lower operational ceilings. On top of that, the U-2 has numerous components that are unique to the craft. As very few planes are designed to operate this way, U-2 maintenance can be very different from what ground crews might encounter with other, more versatile aircraft. To ensure every component is given the proper attention by trained personnel, every part of the U-2 has its maintenance team assigned to it. This means only crews specializing in those systems are qualified to inspect and repair them. Such repairs are even done at different times so that there are minimal distractions and zero interruption from other maintenance teams. It also ensures that crews aren't bumping into each other as they crowd around the 63-foot plane. Phase maintenance happens at every 1,000 flight hours and takes around 12 days to complete. The U.S. Air Force has many unsung heroes, but the aircrew flight equipment technicians have one of the most important behind-the-scenes jobs. These men and women are responsible for inspecting and maintaining all the gear a pilot might wear daily. Like somewhere in here, mm -hmm. and you won't be able to get it up in. It's because the end of this yellow stuff is too. These are on a 30 day cycle, so. You're fine, you stay there all along. Thanks, man. This includes their helmet, parachute, and anything else they rely on to ensure they can perform their job safely, no matter the conditions they might encounter. You guys can go. AFE techs also ensure the pilots are equipped with survival equipment, like life rafts and life preserves, which they'll need in case of an ejection. There it goes. These men and women physically prepare and pack the parachutes worn by pilots and radar operators every day. When dealing with a full spacesuit rig like the one worn by U-2 pilots, the aircrew flight equipment tech's job becomes infinitely more complex. As previously mentioned, the Dragon Lady has a partially pressurized cabin. The reason U-2 pilots wear the pressure suit is to ensure that they travel in a physiological deficient zone above 12,000 feet without experiencing decompression sickness. Going down. Even so, pilots need to be aware of and prepared to deal with the symptoms of hypoxia. This is when the body does not have enough O2 to maintain homeostasis. It can result in heart rate problems, 
confusion, and other medical situations that could be catastrophic at high altitudes. To experience these symptoms in a controlled environment, pilots undergo training in a hypoxia simulation chamber. The O2 and pressure levels of this chamber can be altered, allowing pilots to feel the symptoms of hypoxia in a safe controlled environment. Air Force hopes they will help them recognize and deal with the condition should it arise during flight. When a U-2 pilot prepares for a mission, they need to undergo several procedures not common in other flight prep. Simply donning the suit itself takes assistance from several technicians. Grease on the zipper. Yeah. The suit and helmet are fully contained and will be partially pressured throughout the flight. Before being placed in the cockpit, Pilots must spend roughly one hour breathing 100% oxygen while under very close supervision. This process removes nitrogen from the blood. Pilots must carry a portable oxygen supply when it comes time to get on the plane. This allows them to breathe comfortably until they can be hooked up to the oxygen supply inside the aircraft. The U-2 takeoff and landing process is equally unique. Indeed, it's much more of a launch than a takeoff in that it requires the assistance of dozens of people working towards the same goal. For one thing, the cockpit is incredibly cramped and the pilot's helmet and flight suit make it very difficult for them to get a full view. During takeoff, they receive information from a series of guide cars who follow them down the runway, warning them of potential problems and explaining current conditions. As the plane is difficult to handle, very light, and has a substantial lift, the pilot needs to fully concentrate on getting the plane airborne safely. Another major challenge, which will become apparent yet again during landing, is the U-2's landing gear. When the U-2 Dragon Lady comes in for a landing, all of the problems experienced during takeoff are compounded. Not only does the pilot suffer from poor visibility, but they need to bring the massive aircraft down safely on just two centrally aligned wheels. Since its wings are 40 feet longer than the fuselage, they need support as well. This led engineers to attach temporary wheels called pogos on either side. These provide stability during launch, but fall off directly after takeoff. Early on in the U-2 program, the Air Force began to collaborate with NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. 
It was NASA that helped develop the technology that allows pilots to safely operate while reaching extremely high altitudes. However, NASA has also invested in its own U-2 spy plane, which has since been designated the ER-2, or Earth Resources Aircraft. The mission of the ER-2 is to provide civilian research of all kinds. This includes mapping Earth resources, celestial observations, ocean processes, and analyzing atmospheric chemistry. Over the years, the aircraft has been used to photograph shuttle launches and help map wildfires over the West Coast. Despite being in service for nearly 70 years, the U-2 and its ER-2 variant remain among the most important aircraft in the United States arsenal. Whether documenting activity by hostile foreign powers or helping to document our changing world, this high-flying aircraft still has work to do. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.